Hello, welcome to the second episode of the Background Processing in Functional Scala series. I know it's been a, almost a year since the last episode, but I haven't really had good ideas on how to continue this. Uh, now I do, so we will we'll do that. And also in the meantime, Cast Effect 3 has been released, so we have more goodies to play with. And we are actually going to use something that's, uh, that's only in Cast Effect 3. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, in the previous uh, episode, uh, we talked about multiple ways to combine two IOs together. Um, the first one would be to run them sequentially. We would just run one IO, wait for it to succeed, and then uh, run the second one and wait for that. Uh, also, we could run two IOs together in parallel. We would use the par product operator that's in Cast Effect 2. In Cast Effect 3, uh, in order to use this, you would need to import cast simplices first, uh, or you can use the both operator. This is the same thing. It it just changed the name. Uh, and finally, we had the way to run an I.O. and let it run forever and just run something else in the meantime. And this would never be interrupted or, uh, you know, it would just run as long as it takes to complete P1. In this case, that would be one second, but uh, it could also be a never ending program. We get the idea. So let's look at other ways uh, of, of composing these programs. Uh, we will use uh, a program this will be our background process. What it's going to do is it's going to print some text in the beginning, then it's going to wait for some time, 100 milliseconds. Uh, it's going to print something else, then wait for one second and return a result. And whatever this program does, like does it succeed, does it fail or does it get canceled? We will print the, the, the effect of that, the result, the outcome. Uh, so this will be actually an outcome of, uh, of int. Uh, so now uh, let me demonstrate what this could look like. If we do a timeout on this, let's say 200 milliseconds, uh, this is guaranteed to complete with a, with a timeout. Uh, I can do attempt here so that the whole, the main program doesn't fail, uh, but we are going to see completed with canceled because that's the, the outcome of this program. And there we go. We have starting, started, and then completed with canceled. So this outcome that we got here, uh, this used to be called exit case, and it would be also just uh, completed, errored, or cancelled, uh, except uh, that the shape has changed a little, and in the case of the success, we can also access the, the actual result, the actual value of this. So if we run this as uh, without the timeout, after one second we'll see that it's, it succeeded. Uh, there's an I.O. in here, there's a reason for that. You can read more about this in the migration guide for Cuts Effect 3 or you can uh, go to the documentation of the spawn type class, this gen spawn, uh, which is a generalization of the spawn type class, but uh, you, you, can, you can read about that in cast effect. Uh, so, so far we only have one process. There's no, not really a background in there, uh, but we can change that quite easily. So I mentioned in the previous video, we had the start operator and this would yield a fiber. Uh, and as a fiber, uh, we could uh, cancel it, or we could join. Uh, nowadays, this will give us an outcome. So this is a change from Cast Effect 2. Previously, we would get something like uh, like this, like in join with never, we would get just an I.O. with the result, but now we get an I.O. with an outcome, so we can actually see whether this fiber was canceled or it failed or whatever. So we can use start, right? We can use start, we'll get a fiber, but let's say we want to do it safely. We will wrap this in bracket, uh, in brackets, uh, just like that, actually. Uh, here we'll have the fiber. And in the cleanup of this bracket, we'll just cancel the fiber. And here we can maybe, let's do a join. Uh, the point is that uh, bracket allows me to, it's basically like flat map, right? Except even if this whole program gets canceled, uh, for example, by a timeout, uh, this will still run. This, this cancel will still run. So. I have a guarantee that I will not leak this, this background process and leave it running forever. So I can do things like, uh, let's get back to bracket. I can do things like IO sleep one second here. And actually I can ju do just that. I can ignore the fiber. Let's run this. And if I, uh, if I just let it run, uh, after one second, we will uh, see that the, the background process, the, the proc here, uh, the fiber that we started, it actually got cancelled uh, because of the bracket, right? And this is actually a, a quite useful pattern, so useful that it was encoded in the method. So we have background, 
uh, the background method on NIO. And we don't need to do this bracket, we can just do use, uh, just like we would on any other resource. So a back, the background method returns a resource uh, of the fiber, basically. If you don't know what the resource is, uh, I have a video about that. Uh, in any case, we have this resource and we can use it. And here we'll have the join part, part of the fiber. So if we wait for this, then we are actually going to wait for the whole program to complete, the whole background process. Uh, we don't have to do this. And if we don't wait for it, uh, then when this use section is done, we will close the resource and thus we will cancel this fiber from the background. So this uh, completed with canceled will be printed. Uh, for example, if I do this, and uh, that should actually happen, that should be the same case. So yeah, so this is exactly as we did with, with bracket. Mm, also, we could time out this in here. This will also trigger a cancellation here. Uh, all, or we could uh, wait for this fiber and we will see that it succeeded. So, so yeah, so we have all the, basically all the capabilities of uh, fiber, except it's sort of done in a more managed way because the, back, the, the resource will actually handle the cancellation of the research of the fiber. So yeah, so this is pretty uh, like relatively simple. We can add some more complexity to this. Uh, I wanted to show you how background processes can communicate with uh, the main process, the foreground process. And for that, we are going to use a promise. Uh, a promise in case effect is called deferred. Uh, it's a different name because a deferred cannot fail technically. And there's already a promise in the Scala standard library. So this is going to be a promise or a deferred of unit. We're going to flat map on this, and I'm going to explain something right now. Uh, you might be wondering why I have to flat map on this, why I don't just get a promise out of this. Uh, the reason is that any kind of shared mutable state that can be used between, uh, between IOs, uh, in order to use it to instantiate that state, we need to wrap it in an IO, basically. It needs to be suspended in IO, otherwise uh, we would be breaking refresh and transparency. Uh, there's a great talk by Fabio Labella from Scala Italy. I'm going to link it in the description. Uh, you can, I recommend you watch it and you will find out why this has to be the case. Uh, so we have this promise and what we're going to do, we're going to let this background process run for some time. And let's say after one second, uh, we will uh, we'll complete this promise, okay? And then we'll just wait for the, for the background process. Uh, but right now the, pro the background process is not even waiting for the promise, so we need to make it wait. Uh, so it will take, let's call it a latch. It's, it'll take an IO of unit, and we are going to pass promise get. Uh, so promise get will uh, basically block the fiber in, without blocking the thread, but it will just suspend the fiber at a given point of time. Uh, at this point where we wait for the slash, of course, we are not doing that yet. Uh, we're going to do it after we start. So somewhere here, uh, we will wait for this, uh, this, this promise actually. Uh, and then when this promise completes, we'll just continue to, to do the rest. Uh, so now this whole program, let's see what this should do. Uh, we will see starting actually let's add some more print, more print lines. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Uh, main started, and then we'll say uh, uh, background unblocked, okay? So what we should see right now is we'll see these two logs, like print lines, in about the same time. They can be, uh, I think this one should go first, but th there could be a race condition uh, because they're running at essentially the same time. So we'll see these two, uh, then 100 milliseconds will pass, uh, we'll see started, then about 900 milliseconds will pass and we will uh, see background unblocked. And finally, this will complete, it will succeed, and we'll see the, the result here. Uh, so let's run that. Okay, so that's what, what happened. Uh, we saw starting and main started uh, in this order. Uh, I think it's always going to be that way, but in theory, it could be something else. Uh, it could be the opposite order of these two, two messages. We can also go the other way around. We can actually make the background process uh, do something for the main process, right? So we can do like, let's call it reverse latch, uh, just being creative with, with names. 
it's going to be a function from int to IO unit. And the binary process is going to complete that after it, it started. So here, uh, it's going to call reverse latch. Let's say we'll complete with 10. Now we need some sort of parameter here. Uh, we'll create another promise, except this one will be of int. Uh, and it needs a different name, so this will be, uh, let's call it just num. Uh, whatever name will be fine. And we will use uh, num complete here. And there's something I need to fix. The IO completes a boolean and I need it to return unit, so I'll do void. And now, so yeah, this will be run before this, this promise complete. Uh, I think we can wait for it before the sleep. So we'll wait for it here. Uh, this is num get. Uh, and we are going to print this. Okay. So now we'll get basically the same thing as before, except uh, somewhere between these two, we'll see this uh, 10. Okay, there it is. So you can see here that these two, two fibers are coordinating their work. First, the background process uh, provides a value for the main process, uh, this, this 10 value right here. And then it waits for something to happen in the main process. So yeah, we don't actually have to use background here. We could be doing uh, all of this with just the both operator. So let's see what this would look like. Uh, we'd have the left, left hand side. And this will be, uh, let's say it's going to be this main pro process. Uh, we are not going to wait for this join because we don't have it. Uh, and then we are going to have the background process, which will be just the right hand side will be just this, just the process. And now we can uh, we can wait for both. Uh, so LHS, both RHS. Uh, this will return an IO of unit and int. We only want the, the right hand side. What we can do is use the right parallel shark operator. Uh, you can use this or you can use both and then map to the second part. Or you can do LHS, RHS map n, sorry, par map n, uh, something like this, uh, except we need to import cast implicits. And yeah, uh, th there are several ways to do this. Uh, this should give us the same result. And it did. So as you can see, we don't actually need the background method for this, but there are several cases where it simplifies things and uh, you can use any of these tools like the both method, the uh, paramap n method uh, or background, uh, depending on your use case, one might be better than the other. Now let's see what would happen if we run this sequentially. So uh, just map n. Uh, the program is going to hang and we are not going to see it complete ever. So this is because nobody completes this promise because the, uh, the process that would actually complete this promise has not, has not started yet. The left hand side, this runs first and it has to complete uh, because we are running them, these two programs sequentially. So this will never start because th this program cannot, can just not continue. Uh, but if we cancel that, for example, with a timeout, uh, we're going to see, uh, well, this just can, gets canceled. If we reverse the order here, uh, let's, let's run it that way, uh, we will still see this this guarantee case, we'll see this completed with uh, canceled. There we go. So we saw that uh, because there was a timeout, but still this side of the program never starts. So you need to be careful not to cause a deadlock in your program when you're using something like a promise uh, or waiting on some fibers or using uh, using IO never. Uh, you, need to, you need to be careful to not hang your whole program. So I hope this was instructive. In the next video, we're going to talk about the supervisor abstraction in CassiveX3. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Most of you are not subscribed. I would love if that changed. Um, leave a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next episode.